Well, Ulysses, I didn't realize it was time, but it is time. Arbitration season is upon us and for the race as well. It is indeed. And some were uh, in agreement, some were not. So let's talk about that right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sembrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays, as well as all the other podcasting platforms out there. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays and email us anytime. We love the mailbag questions and comments. Locked On Rays at gmail.com. Uh, Ulysses, before we get into a discussion on the Rays reaching terms with most of their arbitration eligible players, uh, we do want to point out and note that uh, they made, I think, a cool, fun, interesting uh, signing that uh, we won't have time to discuss on today's show, but Monday's show, we plan to dive into that. Yeah, very excited. Uh, I don't think uh, we had this on the uh, musts do before the season started. But yeah, they signed uh, now Yuki Uwasawa, right-handed pitcher from Japan, uh, to a minor league deal with obviously some escalators in, in there uh, due to performance bonuses. And we will talk about that. We know that it happened, uh, but that'll be for Monday's episode. So there you go. A little tease for you Locked on Race uh fans and uh we will talk about that on monday yeah so uh i think uh if you have a a comment a question or a take on that signing feel free to email us locked on raise at gmail.com or hit us a message on social media so uh before we get to that on monday we have uh more pressing matters and that is like i said the rays reaching terms with eight of their 10 arbitration eligible players the exceptions were designated hitter Hale Ramirez and right-handed reliever Jason Adam. And baked within all that, uh, the Rays signed Shane McClanahan to a two-year $7.2 million contract to avoid arbitration. Uh, and uh, that locks him up for, I guess it would be the 2025 season. Reported originally by one Robert Murray of... Fansided.com. So uh, kudos and congrats to him for getting the scooperoo there and not uh, Jeff Passan or Bob Nightingale or Mark Topkin or or one of the other cast of characters. Yeah, no, good for him. That's that's awesome. Uh, I think although the, the Shane um, two-year deal is like, oh, that's, that's nice. Some people were scratching their heads. I was not scratching my head at the fact that they did a two-year. I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Like, yeah. it actually makes sense when somebody's going into Tommy John to just like, hey, look, this is what's going to happen. But I Doing did. Doing that with a star player, too, like a Tyler Glass now, somebody of McClanahan's ilk. I was, yeah, just to, to piggyback off that. Yeah. But the most important thing that I was like, oh, that's interesting, is the fact that there's actually escalators for the 2024 season, um, about in 2025, of $120,000 more per each start that he makes. That's very interesting because yeah. that could <laughs> that could rack up quite quickly. And if you want to be a glass half full person, which why not? It's January 12th. Be that person. Um, hey, could we see Shane McClanahan in 2024? Huh. huh. Yeah, that's an that's interesting. interesting. Question. Um, the escalator thing where he would or could earn an extra $120,000 for each start does that pertain just to 2024 or also 2025? I, I thought it was it, just 2024, but I, I, could be wrong. I think it was 2025 and 2024. Hmm. Oh, then okay. he could, yeah, really rack up money in 2025 then. Yeah, because that had surprised me initially when it was like, oh, he signs a two year, $7.2 million contract. I'm like, that seems kind of low for 
what uh, Shane McClanahan has already done in his career, and I know he's a super two player and he still has a couple more years of arbitration after this deal before becoming a free agent in 2028. Yeah. But I was thinking like a Tyler Glass now light type situation, but I guess that may only pertain to if, uh, you know, if it was Shane McClanahan going into his final year of arbitration and then buying out his first free agent year or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think it would increase. Look, I, I I thought I had it for 24 and 25. If it's and that's if it's 24, obviously it's gonna be like what a couple of starts at the most because he got hurt right after the um all-star game and the all-star game was mid-July. So let's yeah. say he got hurt like I think in August. So 12 months would be this August. 13 months we've seen people come back in 13 months but i mean that is like super pushing it so maybe what you're talking playoffs but are you yeah. really going to give the ball to somebody who hasn't seen live action in major league baseball in the playoffs hey you're fresh off tommy john can you give us five shane yeah no it would probably be uh hey do you want to pitch one inning somewhere someplace somehow inning. uh i did a quick google search and uh, just trying to get to the root of this issue um, yeah. according to the score.com reputable site there uh, the contract reportedly includes escalators in 2024 $120,000 per start this season that would go towards his 2025 salary so ah, okay. okay the way I read that is say 2024 he somehow uh, you know has the uh, fountain of youth or uh, some secret uh return timetable he makes you know eight starts eight times one hundred twenty thousand dollars. that'll that'll be levied to his 2025 contract okay that makes that makes sense by the way for those at home um uh, that would be uh what was it a million dollars you said so what's yeah, that a million dollars if he makes eight starts oh yeah um, and i was just I, I wasn't assuming that he'll make eight starts i was just throwing out Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just um, yeah, just to yeah. just to put a because uh, I was gonna say like that. if he um just I'm I'm glad we kind of uh, are getting down into the weeds of this because you know 2025 comes around if those escalators or that uh, incentive was allowed in 2025 just ballparking it say he makes 30 starts in 2025 uh, very liberally uh, times 120 thousand. Oh, okay. That's not as maybe I have my numbers wrong here. Hundred twenty thousand times thirty. Okay, that'd be an extra three and a half million dollars, three point six million dollars, which is a good chunk of change. Which but, would which means he would just be doubling his yeah. um, salary, and also that just makes you that's that kind of just lets you know if three point six million is his base salary, that's exactly what they did. A hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars per start. That's what we value you 120k per start. Um, look, I think it's it's great to have a young starter like him uh, with a a fixed um, salary. I think that's a, that's a good idea. Yes. I don't I don't think it's um, running into the like oh my goodness he's going to be he's going to get traded. I don't think that at all. It's just like you want to know your books if you're the Rays. Right. You want to know what to expect uh, payroll wise. So I think I think that's great. Um, I mean, if they have Aaron Savali locked up for $4.9 million this season, I would think that they can play, uh, pay Shane McClanahan, um, you know, basically $7.2 million for one healthy season. Like that's the, the bang for the buck there. Even if he doesn't return to his former self, you're, you're still going to get enough out of that to make it worthwhile for sure. You should be, you should be. And you know what, uh, when you want to make something worthwhile, Kevin, you got to get to game time. You got to get to game time because these guys are obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets, which we love. Okay. They have ticket, they have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. Uh, even an hour after that event starts. So if you're like Kevin and want to just, you know, get into the, the game and uh, after the third inning, you can do that using game time. And Kevin loves to use game time. So today, you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code 
L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. That's Andrew Jackson, baby. So download Game Time today. Last minute ticket deal, slowest price guaranteed. So I guess uh, the question is, do you think Shane McClanahan makes a start in 2024? I'm going to go ahead and say, nah, fam. It's so it's so close. Like, yeah. is there a chance? Sure. Let's throw the Jim Carrey uh, gif out there uh, from Dumb and Dumber. You're but saying there's a chance, yeah. <laughs> but I, if you have to put green Skittles, I, I'm not going to put green Skittles on a dude like coming back literally 13 months after it hasn't been done. Yes, but the, the odds are against that. So I'm going to yeah. say no. He underwent uh, his second second Tommy John surgery on August 21st, I should okay. know. And I, I would be curious to see. August 21st. That's, yeah, August 21st. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that date. Um, And I don't know, maybe it uh, pertains to or doesn't pertain to or is a factor, is not a factor. But going through your second Tommy John surgery versus your first, I don't know if that alters the rehab or lead time to come back i don't know if, if your body's if you're more likely to come back quicker or it's regardless if it's your your first tommy john or your fourth tommy john that it's still going to be the 13 to 17 months that's that's question. that's true and and you know have you had an injury uh uh the same injury twice kevin uh yes Ankle injuries, unfortunately. Ankle, uh, yeah, rem- yeah. My goodness, yeah. for people just behind the curtain, Kevin hurt his foot one time, and this man could not take a day off. This is the no. grinder in Kevin. He would play basketball with the damn boot. With the boot, yes, I, I am. Uh, I am that guy. I can certify that if people, if if they put me on, hey, have you ever seen Kevin be a grinder on the on the court? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. This man will play with one damn foot. Um, I took but- that thing everywhere. Took it to the gym. <laughs> took it yeah. to the softball field. I think I might have yeah. hit some range balls. With you that. went to the DMV with it. You're yeah, driving car. Everything. Yeah. Um, I asked that because I, I've also had the same injury twice, rotator cuff. And for you guys listening and watching and subscribing and hitting that like button right now, you might have the same injury twice. I feel like it's better the second time around because at least mentally, you know how the path of mm-hmm. recovery is. You know what to expect. You know what worked. I feel like that, at least mentally, is, is a, it's a good way of, of having this. But when it's literally your livelihood and it might become a, lo- a lot of pressure of like oh my goodness like am i close to just being done out of my dream right. so i i don't know if obviously it's like apples and oranges but you know just thought I, th- I should throw that out there yeah no that's good and i i would think him being older more mature and going through it the first time around he is uh in a more prepared headspace and knows what he has to do as far as uh rehab and getting himself right that you hope that um and he hopes that uh, he's able to come back in 12, 13 months rather than 16 to 17 months. So we will uh, keep an eye and a track on that. Um, meantime, just want to throw out, I had mentioned the um, the agreements uh, with like Aaron Savali, $4.9 million. But just to give the other figures here, Randy Rosarena yeah. will be making uh, 8.1 mil this season. Isak Paredes, 3.4. Colin Pochet, 2.37. Sean Armstrong, 2.05. Rasmussen, 1.862. And Zach Littell, 1.85. As for Jason Adam and Harold Ramirez, no idea as of yet what they are going to make. Um, I should note that Adam made uh, 1.77 million last year, uh, beating the Rays in the arbitration process uh, previously. And then uh, Harold made two point two million dollars this past year. So with Adam, the difference is five hundred k. He wants three point two five, and the Rays offer two point seven five. So if you made in the middle, it'd be three mil. But again, mm-hmm. it's not going to be that. The arbitration goes either the team's um, offer, which is two point seven five, or the Adam offer, which is three point two five. So that's how arbitration will go, either one or the other. Now, 
I do want to stop by with Harold Ramirez, who, by the way, is playing now uh, officially in the Venezuelan uh, Winter League. He arrived. He's playing for my team, Leones del Caracas, which is that uh, flag right there in the back if you're on YouTube. There we go. Leones del Caracas. Uh, Harold, this is... <laughs> I'm just in awe of, of the hitter that this guy is. Look, this man got off an airplane the same day, couldn't, didn't have time to talk to the media that he had to take. He had lunch in the dugout, like in the clubhouse, um, took some swings in the cage. Dude was batting third in the lineup. And guess what? He went two for four with a double RBI run scored in the first inning. Like yeah. he, <laughs> this is a professional Hitter, like you know, we we say with Yandy Diaz, he can wake up and hit. Harold Ramirez can wake yeah. up and hit. Um, so regarding arbitration, he um he filed for four point three mil, and so he basically counter- double what he made this past season. And the race counter with three point eight, so they're about again five hundred thousand yeah. dollars um away. I I mean, I know that he might not fit with uh what we've talked about the race for 26 men roster can do, but for a player of his caliber, I think 4.3 is, is more than fair. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy is just a great hitter might not have it with the glove, but he's a great hitter. Right. Yeah. And at some point you've got to throw, Oh, what's his barrel percentage and what's his launch angle and what's his chase rate. No, the dude wakes up and he'll hit <laughs> 290, 300. I mean, this past season, he hit 313 with 12 homers and 68 RBI. Uh, And he's in his third and final year of arbitration, 29 years old, right in his prime. And uh, reportedly, the Rays have already shopped him around. So that's another question is um, he agrees or we we figure out what he's going to make in 2024. And then the Rays turn around and ship him off uh, somewhere else. But he's a guy that with as many young players and as much uncertainty and uh, as much swing and miss in the lineup, I mean, who's going to say no to a 300 hitter? Whether your OPS is, you know, your career OPS is 750 or 875. Like, at some point, you just got to kind of take out the noise and say, this guy is uh, is valuable. I, I, I feel like he's Rodney Dangerfield, just doesn't get any respect. No. Um, and uh, either within the organization or outside the organization. Because people are trying to always put these kind of players down. Like first, oh, he has no glove. So uh, he's just a DH and it, he hits th- over 300 with a 780 OPS. Well, you know, uh, he doesn't hit the ball hard enough. He got babbits. Like it's always trying yeah. to like, et, you know, take away from his merits, which is insane. It, because when you look at a bell curve, when you look at a, 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 the spectrum of hitting, some guys are going to be the Babbitt lucky guys. Like, and he might just be that guy. Like it's, you know, I, I think it's always looking at, you know, hoping or, or, or thinking that the, the other shoe's going to drop with, with Harold, but the guy has shown time and time again in every league that he's ever played that he will hit. Oh yeah. hundred percent. So, um, Quick question before we move on to the baseball trivia and name that war. Uh, and I should also note that, um, well, Ulysses, I'll ask you this question. Do you know how many players across baseball did not reach terms with their respective teams? I do have uh, an inkling because I did see the Passan tweet. I think 26, you said? 23? 23. Okay. 23. And two of those, two of those 23 are raised players. So, yeah. um yeah, that uh, fits the narrative for sure. Uh, again, I get it. The Rays, they they want to uh, protect and and they want to uh, they want to battle for every dollar that they can. Um, but as Eric Neander uh, mentioned in uh, comments to the Tampa Bay Times, he was very politically correct and and try to be very careful with his words of saying, "Hey." Just a little difference of opinion here on our evaluations. We definitely do not want to upset the apple cart and um, disparage, you know, Harold Ramirez, Jason Adam, anybody that uh, goes to arbitration because those those hearings can get nasty. And, and players, after you know, sitting in those rooms, they 
they feel some type of way about, oh my gosh, they really pointed out all the negatives and what I suck at basically, or why I, I don't uh, deserve to be paid this amount versus the other amount. So it's mm-hmm. kind of walking a fine line of you want to um, be able to be judicious with um, your finances, but you also don't want to upset and uh, cause a rift in the clubhouse or within the organization because guys aren't happy with uh, how they were talked about or treated or what they're making. Or what the teammates um, heard either, right? Because like mm-hmm. you might not be Harold, you might not be Jason, but you know your friends and your teammates and yeah. you wouldn't like somebody like bad mouthing your your um your teammate your friend yeah. so you know it's it, there's a there's a lot of like finesse. people talk people talk yeah, oh, can of course. You, you know what they said about me in the the room there and in some people put twitter threads like ryan thompson did oh, last yeah. year so like is he on the Rays roster anymore no not fam but you know what you know what can be in your roster kevin a good place to put some damn good green skittles on yes uh and that would be fan duel uh as we know the nfl regular season is wrapping up but i will say this there's still time to get on in on the action with fan duel they are america's number one sports book right now new customers can get 150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a five dollar bet that's a hundred and fifty buckaroos in bonus bets win or lose uh and here's the cool thing the app is really easy to use, and there's a lot of different ways that you can bet on sports. They've got uh, live same-game parlays. You can find bets and what they have, uh, an explore tab. They've got Parlay Hub. There's so many other features as well that you should dive in and check out. So go ahead. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N to make your first bet a a layup. I'll repeat it again. FanDuel.com slash locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. That's the place to go. FanDuel, they are an official partner of the National Football League. Um, So before getting to baseball trivia, name that war, quick question. Uh, eight Eight of these 10 guys, and then uh, eventually, I suppose, Harold Ramirez and Jason Adam uh, making it 10 of 10. Um, well, Shane McClanahan will will take him out of the equation. But between Adam, Ramirez, Randy, Savali, Paredes, Poche, Armstrong, Rasmussen, Latell, are all of those guys in the organization or on the opening day roster come 2024? Or do you think the Rays will trade one or more of those? I think I think Harold is going okay. to to get the the trading um, boot per se. Everybody else um, should stick around. I, I, I mean, especially the pitchers. I don't see how you could get away with Armstrong, Poche, Savali, Latell. Like you need those guys. Yeah. Um, Isak, hello. You got in, Isak is a guy you build around now <laughs> with that uh, season that he had. Uh, Rosarena, come on. And uh, so, yeah, I think the odd man out there is, is Harold. But again, if Harold is on the opening day roster, that should tell us tell us something about what the race think about the next wave, the Jonathan Aranda, the Curtis Mead, the Caminero. Like, if they're still like, no, nah, we need Harold. That should tell that that should say something about what that tells. It, does that tell you that those guys still need some work and are still marinating and the Rays aren't 100 percent sure on them as of yet? Exactly. Yeah. OK, that's fair. Yeah, should be uh, interesting to see how it all shakes out. And here's the thing with Harold. I just don't think the Rays will get. Um, well, I, I thought this before, but maybe my opinion's changing that if he's just not valued around the league, like um, we think he should be valued. I mean, what are the Rays going to get in return for him aside from just wanting to get the salary off the books? But then again, uh, they pulled some fun trades with Kittredge and Rayleigh. And I think they got a little bit more than I thought they would get out of those. So uh, maybe the Rays can work some, some magic there. Call the Cardinals, call the Mariners, see what you can get for uh, Harold Ramirez and go from there. All right. uh, Moving on baseball trivia. Ulysses, what do you got? Okay, so for baseball trivia, 
hey, we talked a lot about Harold Ramirez. So for those of you that don't know, Harold Ramirez has played 242 games with the Rays. That's 869 plate appearances. If he had just a few hundred plate appearances more, he would be in the top 10 list mm. of batting averages in team history. Batting average in team history. So guess what? Today, I have the list in front of me of those top 10 players mm. in race history batting average. So at least they're going to have 1,000 PAs. The guy I saw that had the least was a player who played three years with the Rays, had 344 games and 1,500 plate appearances. So basically a whole full year worth more than what Harold has right now. Okay. Out of those top 10 guys, Kevin, can you name seven? So top 10 career batting averages in the Rays organization. That's what we're going for. Yeah. And what is, what is the minimum? A thousand. A thousand. I never saw a guy with less than a uh, thousand plate appearances, but it was usually more than 1,300. Like that. Okay. Uh, Carl Crawford. He is number one of this list at 296. James Loney. Very nice. He is also correct on this list. He's tied for number two at 291. Okay. Logan Forsyth. Not enough plate appearances. Strike one. Jason Bartlett. Very good guess. He's number five on the list at 288. Underrated. Yes. The, uh, Rays player, Jason Bartlett. Maybe uh, Caballero can uh, develop into a uh, Bartlett type. Dude, that would dude. be so thick. Um, I don't know if this guy late enough but i'll throw it out there i'm just trying to think of like high batting average ish guys casey kochman not enough only mm. one season strike two okay i'm gonna go i know he wasn't known for his batting averages but maybe he snuck into this list i mean he is you know the figurehead for the Rays organization evan longoria no. Not high enough. Oh man, yeah, I think he had a lot of you know two sixty, low two seventy type seasons. Um, Indeed. You want to just try one foul tip, one more? Yeah, let me do a foul tip here. Oh, You're gonna hate yourself when I read, read this list, especially because of one very big name. A very big and obvious name. Okay. Fine, I'll throw it out there. I doubt. I don't know if he played enough. That's the thing. Wade Boggs. Incorrect. Okay, I'm done. The big name. Uh, you're, I'm so sorry. This is going to hurt. Yandy Diaz. Oh, my gosh. I totally. At 291, he's tied with James Loney and Fred McGriff, who also has a 291 betting average. That was my backup this guess. Those guys are all tied at number two. Number five was Jason Bartlett, like you said. Number six, Aubrey Huff, uh, tied with Julio Lugo, batting 287. Eight, Akinori Iwamura at 281. Number nine, you love him, great name. Now a manager, Rocco Baldelli at 280. And number 10, a Devil Rays legend traded for a manager, Randy win at 279 and of course clubhouse leader carl crawford at 296 that's disappointing yeah i, I should know. have done better i deserve a demerit for that one unfortunately uh all right uh man that's disappointing all right we Thank gotta you. move on uh name that war uh i know it's a little bit of a teaser here because uh we'll talk more about the Uwasawa signing on Monday's program, but figured I would uh, throw out a Japanese pitcher uh, who had success in the big leagues. That's a little bit of a hint there. Hiroki Kuroda, what is his career 
war in the States, not internationally, I should note. His Major League Baseball career war. Corona. Okay. Okay. Dude, I've got nothing on this. Let's see. Off the hip. How many years did he play? I don't even know. Uh, Let's say he played. Can you tell me when he last played? 2014. So it's been essentially a decade. Okay. 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 So let's say 2014. And then what? If he played 10 years, it would be what? 2004. But I don't remember him being that long of us. Uh, off the hip. Let's go with 10 war. Okay. Hiroki Kuroda played seven years in the big league, starting with the Dodgers for four seasons and then closed out with the Yankees. Uh, he arrived to the States late mm-hmm. in his career. Uh, 2008, he was 33 years old. By the time he uh, finished up with the Yankees in 2014, he was 39 years old. But I'll tell you this, he was a uh, Pretty Mr. Consistent. Um, He started off with 183 innings in 2008, then 117, 196, 202, 219, 201, and 199. Uh, He didn't have an ERA above four or above, I should say, 3.77. Wow. Any of those seasons. So you could basically bank on him, you know, giving you, uh, you know, 180, 190, 200 innings and, uh, you know, three and a half ERA, give or take. Um, So uh, he did for his career have a 3.45 ERA, 986 strikeouts, 1.172 whip. um, Mm. And all that. and I should note, he never made an all-star appearance, believe it or not. Um, all that bottled up, his career war was 20.9. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, sneaky good. Like, sneaky I just good. under the radar. Maybe yeah. it was because he was in a Dodgers and Yankees uniform. Maybe there were higher profile guys that got more of Nobody the, the ever, ever talks about Kuroda. No. Yeah. Not at all. They literally say uh, Hideo Nomo before Kuroda. Well, that's the thing. Like, I think that's a great point because when I think of Japanese pitchers in a Dodgers uniform, I think of Nomo. When I think of Japanese pitchers in a Yankees uniform, I think of Tanaka. Exactly. He got exactly. second billing, unfortunately. He's the he's the Bobby Abreu of 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 Japanese pitchers in MLB. Just undervalued, yeah. underrated, and putting up numbers. Very. Well said. All right. Um, Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you next week.